Yet the medieval forces of radical Islam, whom you just saw storming the American embassies throughout the Middle East, well, they oppose this. They seek supremacy over all Muslims. They're bent on world conquest. They want to destroy Israel, Europe, America. They want to extinguish freedom. They want to end the modern world. Now, militant Islam has many branches, from the rulers of Iran with their uh, revolutionary guards to al-Qaeda terrorists to the radical cells lurking in every part of the globe. But despite their differences, they are all rooted in the same bitter soil of intolerance. That intolerance is directed first to their fellow Muslims and then to Christians, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus, secular people, anyone who doesn't submit to their unforgiving creed. They want to drag humanity back to an age of unquestioning dogma, unrelenting conflict. I'm sure of one thing. Ultimately, they will fail. Ultimately, light will penetrate the darkness. We've seen that happen before. Some 500 years ago, the printing press helped pry a cloistered Europe out of a dark age. And eventually, ignorance gave way to enlightenment. So too, a cloistered Middle East will eventually yield to the irresistible power of freedom and technology. And when this happens, our region will be guided not by fanaticism and conspiracy, but by reason and curiosity. I think the relevant question is this. It's not whether this fanaticism will be defeated. It's how many lives will be lost before it's defeated. And we've seen that happen before, too. Some 70 years ago, the world saw another fanatic ideology bent on world conquest. Now it went down in flames but not before it took millions of people with it. Those who opposed that fanaticism waited too long to act. In the end, they triumphed, but at an horrific cost. My friends, we cannot let that happen again. You see, at stake is not merely the future of my country. At stake is the future of the world.